that topic introduction as in some ways a one down as an offer yeah, yeah, intended one, yeah. to yeah. give the other person control of the conversation. Uh -huh. Give the other person an initiative. What did you read it as? Kind of the same thing. <laughs> so you marked it as a one down? Huh? You marked it as a one up. What B says is hmm. Okay, so what B says is we definitely not moving this conversation forward. Yeah. And then A comes back in and basically gives a, another initiative to try to get a reaction out of B. Right. And I think that's probably because they're pretty insistent about that being our opening topic. That's why Laura and Mary had coded as a one up. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? You just you hadn't initially coded it that way? Like we're gonna talk about pirates. And then the guy's like, mm, he's like, we're really gonna talk about pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way is the is the yeah. Pittsburgh Pirates yeah. Yeah, baseball team. So we're gonna talk about baseball and we're gonna talk about Pittsburgh. So that's a definite that's a pretty strong one up move. Um, and he then further asserts Yeah. You know, really suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So initially we have a series of one-ups and essentially one-downs. And then you get a shift. And after a fairly long break, 30 seconds, time that out. There's a pregnant that pause. That's a long break. But you go to the bathroom? Man, I right. 30 seconds for a bathroom break. It's like running. Well, there are guys. Uh, that's an assumption. It helps to be a guy. Well, I mean, that's an assumption. You still got to wash your hands, and that takes at least 30 seconds. Uh, Does it? Rules that, that's, 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 that's no, okay, it's actually worth pausing here. Well, it's been about 30 seconds since you mentioned that. Yeah, that's not long enough to go to the bathroom. Okay. Okay. Assuming, assuming well, he knows where the bathroom is, so he's got to go into the house. They're like at the door, or are they like in the I assume they're in the living room. It, it, it might, Whatever it might the entry space be, in this apartment may be. It might just be go go to the bathroom. Although he does say, can I use your bathroom? So maybe he has something on his hands. We don't really know. We don't. Exactly. He it might not be actually be anything. using the bathroom. And we are repeatedly referring to gender on this. Yeah. Why are we referring to gender repeatedly on this? Just a feeling I get. Just because. What are the. What are the cues that y'all are reacting to? Sports and motorcycles. <laughs> and being hurt. Okay, so topic. And wanting to talk about your hurt. The one-upping of topic of, of, of uh, you know, who's got the big injuries. Just wanting to one-up. I always associate I mean, just their... The okay, good. So, one of the things that often gets used to differentiate between genders, and you can see, oh... Plus. Blanking on the name of our theorist that does a lot of that. Uh, but typically, the symmetrical one upping is thought of as a male behavior. Yes. Yeah. Well, that he says, she was fine, I was a mess. She, speaking of the motorcycle, oh, was fine, later, I was right. a mess. So for that, I would be. Because the m motorcycle is gendered female, we're going to assume it's a male, huh? Yeah. Okay, so it's not strictly, it's not really a very reliable cue. Vehicles are almost always gendered female, starting with boats. Yes, exactly. Right? Exactly. Boats yeah. were women. Yes. And that goes and back historically forever. <laughs> so it's not really a reliable cue. Um, and indeed, on line 52, where you see the dark black marker scratching something out, what got edited out there was a gender cue because the other way that I use this exercise is I use it to try to get people to articulate stuff about gender cues. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that would be a gender cue. It's either Mr. Economist or Ms. Economist. Yeah. Can I use your bathroom? It's like if a girl were, if, okay, so say there was a girl in the conversation and she was mm -hmm. um, B, it would be like it's, it's okay for guys to kind of act indifferent to each other. Uh, about topics and stuff because that's socialized to kind of be like, oh, you know, I'm not really caring about whatever we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what's And whereas if a girl would be just like, 
to not engage in in that juice that I come it would be really, really rude. Hmm. I think it also I mean we don't have any viewpoints about culture in this. Yeah, That's I would true. also say that the culture is really difficult to kind of tell. Okay. Do any of us know anything about Pittsburgh? Um, I know a little bit about VA. I just know one of the students in my class gave a speech on Pittsburgh, so Okay. <laughs> what do we know about it? What do we know about Pittsburgh? of that persona. Go ahead. What I was trying to say was, you get that loud, obnoxious, almost like a, a Jersey, almost like a New Yorker. You get that same stereotypical attitude about the people from PA and when they're with the sports and with the, the old steel town, you know, they get the same stereotype. All three of them get we the same. think of this, the volume a little bit louder, yeah. conversation endings and starts are a little bit rougher. Yeah, yeah. They're, they tend they're to be edgy. pretty rough. kind of get this sense of, of the excitement about it with, you know, the fact that motorcycles and being outside are on the rain. There's a sense in which there's an impatience to get done with this conversation and get back outside. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, so you keep seeing these distractednesses or attempts at leave taking almost, right? Trying to disengage is what Caitlin had referred yeah. to it as. I just saw this one guy being really rude to the other guy. Just insistent. It's <laughs> just insistent. It's it was just like he was like so uninterested yeah. in the guy and the guy kept trying to say stuff to him and then he kept like either like putting it off like he didn't care or he kind of would say something kind of demeaning about it. So V comes back after the bathroom break and that's a, a one-up move. Would everybody agree with line 53? That's a one-upping move. I, I guess I had already kind of I guess I was reading a little farther ahead, okay. and I was saying that he was, because this guy was like almost pretending that he didn't even notice what it was, or he didn't care what it was, mm -hmm. and then also he was bringing it back to, remember that time when we were in the lobby and you kept saying, you know, what is that, what is that, what is it, and, um, and that was, like, he was like trying to bring up how rude that was, and that the, and that the guy had made himself conscious about it, and he was like pretending that or that he didn't even remember the interaction. And so you're reading that as one down? No, she was reading as one up. Well, 53 I read as one down. But I'm sorry, yes, one yeah. down, you're right. But I, what I think this is where he wanted to one up. What did y'all conclude with line 53 and then the kind of going forwards in that part of the interaction?
able to bring it this hard, you know, maybe to cover him up or, you know, try to... Or something in there reminded... Yeah, reminded him just to... The mirror there, presumably. Yeah. And did you read that as then a one-up? Yeah, I did. Yes, in a sense. I mean... Yeah. to reassure in some well, sense, maybe. I, I would if this really is now something they're self-conscious about, maybe A is trying to say it's not yeah. that big a deal. I guess just because of the way that he was like, do you remember when we were in the lobby and he kept saying, like, how do you get him? How do you get him? And it's just like he, you could tell he just didn't even care. Mm -hmm. Right. Or like he didn't even want to remember it or he didn't want to, anything to do with it. It was almost like he was ashamed that maybe he'd done that, but he just didn't care enough to even. What did y'all? Yeah, we're reading way too much into this conversation. <laughs> Already. It, it is also true that most any conversational move can be interpreted in both ways, and that's the point that Slavik is making on the earlier page in that textbook about content versus relationship. That the re content, every message has relational dimensions to it, and without understanding the relationship dimension, you cannot make sense of the context. The content. Sorry. And that's what we're struggling with. We can't quite make sense of the content because we don't yet have a sense of that relationship. So let's, what are the cues about that relationship might we be able to glean? That we don't know each other very well? They don't know each other yeah. very well. Yeah. Right. The fact that they can pinpoint the last time they interacted as of almost a single time. If I tell you that one of those interactions is not male, what does that do to your reading of that relationship? When people go through the second page, they actually oftentimes argue opposite ways. Because, right, um, who's the one that turns squeamish? A. A is the one that turns squeamish. A is the one that responds to essentially, like, Ronnie's equivalent description of the injury. The equivalent here is the motorcycle injury description. And A is the one that says, oh, no, right? Like I did in class, which is typically thought of as a female. I, Very female. I read that differently, yeah. I guess. I read that as like, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Like, I'm tired of talking about this. <laughs> like, I don't care, you should have been wearing a helmet. Um, and kind of like that. That's kind of what I read it as. Okay. What do y'all think? What conclusions do you draw? Like she's trying to almost oh, impress the other person, yeah, by taking on a male role in many ways, offering up male topics of conversation. Sorry, it's stereotypically male. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's terrible, but you can see where among strangers, if the young lady has no clue what the guy might be interested in, that's here to meet her roommate. And if he's from Pittsburgh. Right? What are you going to pick as your first topic to offer up? It's going to be sports, and you know it's baseball season. Hey, <laughs> right? Right. Maybe she's interested. Possibly, although so it's well, it unfortunate be, because... It must be a girl because the blank out is long enough to be Miss, not Miss Girl. <laughs> <laughs> it is, actually, isn't it?
Oh. So countering the argument that it's so long that it has to be Miss, what if we wrote out Mr. Longhand instead of abbreviating it? Then it could be either. That's what Len is arguing. Oh. I think I think it's a bit of a stretch, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to I am so not gonna resolve said. this mystery for y'all. <laughs> I leave you with this mystery um, for Wednesday.